Welcome to Small Cap Power, Marco. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So give us a little bit of a background on Genesis Mining. When and where did you start mining Bitcoins? Sure. Uh, Genesis Mining has been one of the first uh, blockchain and uh, Bitcoin uh, or cryptocurrency companies in the world. It's, we started in 2013, mm -hmm. uh, where really uh, the whole uh, the whole ecosystem was really at its infancies. And, uh, um, we have started the first mining operation in 2013 and we have grown uh, a lot uh, since then. So where is the company based and uh, where do you mine? Uh, our main base uh, uh, is in Iceland where mm -hmm. we started as well. It's now a very distributed and global company. We have uh, mining facilities in nearly all the continents in the world and, um, yeah, and uh, we're keeping expanding. So why Iceland? Why did you choose Iceland as the location to start? Iceland uh, has a very a big advantage because um, first of all the energy is, uh, is, is very uh, low, mm -hmm. uh, low cost. Um, that's very critical. The other thing also is that the environment, uh, the, the, the temperature is very low. So um, that gives us the opportunity to really mine at a at a low cost mm -hmm. and uh, in a very efficient way and also uh, w which we should not uh, forget is that um, the it's uh, everything is 100% green so that's an additional um, very very great factor Okay, so let's talk about Hive blockchain for a minute here. You own 30% of Hive and you're also on the advisory board of Hive blockchain technologies. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are some of the advantages that Hive has over its peers? Well, I think Hive uh, really um, has a big advantage from the fact that uh, Genesis Mining is uh, supporting and uh, basically um, being the, the, the partner and uh, Genesis Mining is providing the know-how and all the expertise, uh, all the, uh, the existing infrastructure mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and all the, the, the techno technological advantage that uh, Genesis Mining has gained over the years. So Genesis Mining, from my understanding, is the largest cloud-based mining company in the world. So with uh, your company owning 30% of Hive, what could that bring to Hive? Um, well, first of all, I mean, all the the, the know-how, as said, um, the on the technical side, but also uh, the advantage on the hardware side, the mm -hmm. advantage on the data center uh, uh, build out, how to make the most efficient data centers, but also uh, the the know-how on, um, for example, in IP on the software side. Mm -hmm. Genesis Mining uh, owns uh, Genesis Hive, which is the number one um, tool for large-scale mining monitoring. And um, yeah, uh, there's a lot of things that re where Hive can really benefit from. And of course, I mean, Hive benefits from the fact that it's also uh, the first uh, mm -hmm. blockchain company in the public markets. So that's also a critical point. Yeah, that's going to bring a lot of uh, hopefully gains for our Canadian investors who are investing in Hive. So from your perspective, what do you think Bitcoin will be worth in the next 12 months? Uh, well, I get that question quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't want to give any kind of projection on a, on a relatively short uh, scale or short term. Um, I think that uh, on a long term, I'm, quite, I'm, I'm very confident that Bitcoin is really a binary thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that means it's either valued much more than now or it's valued at, at nearly zero. Uh, the fact that it's really going to zero is, is declining. The probability that it's, it's, it's going down is declining more and more as the time goes by and as the adoption grows. So uh, I'm very bullish on Bitcoin and I'm very bullish on the whole uh, cryptocurrency space. And, um, and of course, blockchain offers so much uh, opportunities and so much innovation. It's really incredible. So besides uh, Bitcoin, what other forms of uh, cryptocurrencies do you think investors should be watching? Oh, well, I'm, I think really the whole uh, altcoin market is really an experimental playground in mm -hmm. a way where you have a lot, of, um, a lot of coins that have promising features and some are really, really um, uh, turning out to, be, to, to have really key uh, innovations and uh, some are just experimental and some are some are even there that are questionable uh, you, so you really have a, a wide variety but really from the for the most promising ones i would say are <coughs> For example, the, the privacy coins are very interesting to look. We have like Zcash, um, Monero, 
uh, Dash, mm -hmm. um, but also for, I mean, there are even coins like uh, that uh, have a social uh, character where you have social networks binded to it. Um, and uh, yeah, you have like, for example, also Ethereum Classic is something very interesting because it basically spun off from Ethereum um, after there was the DAO hack. And mm -hmm. some people said, hey, we're, we're, we're really sticking to the ideals of blockchain. We don't want uh, any transaction to be reversed and we want to, the blockchain should stay immutable. And um, yeah, so you have really a wide variety and you have a lot of uh, communities that are backing these coins mm -hmm. and uh, it's very exciting. Yeah, sure. Um, so for our investors' information, what do you think is the easiest and the best way for our average re retail investors to purchase or to buy cryptocurrencies? Um, well, I think there's two ways how to get how to gain uh, how to get uh, currency cryptocurrencies. One is to to buy them, as you said, and mm -hmm. the other one is to mine them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really two fundamental different fundamentally different ways. And uh, it, each of it has some, some advantages and disadvantages. Um, the, if you're buying them, you, you of course you, you own the, the underlying and you profit when the price increases or and you have the downside when the price decreases. Mm -hmm. On the mining side it's a bit different because you have a continuous cash flow and um, you can you can you profit from on the upside, but you can even profit when the when the when the price stays flat, or even sometimes when the price goes down. It's not necessarily that you're making a loss. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and of course, the other benefit also is that um, if you're investing in the underlying miners, um, you can choose which coin to mine, and you can always mine the most profitable coin. So, if you have one or some specific uh, um, cryptocurrencies that uh, increase in value at one day, you can switch over to, to them and you can always yeah, benefit from, from any coin that rises. Whereas when you're picking one altcoin portfolio, you have to stick to this one choice and you can just hope that these altcoins are outperforming and are performing well. Sure. So there's a lot of uh, talk about the cryptocurrency bubble. And now as a leader in the space, what uh, comments do you have for, for well, I'm, I'm hearing this t uh, terminology <laughs> so, so so often yeah. that uh, Bitcoin bubble, is it a bubble, is it not? But uh, I mean, what I can see, I mean, uh, being in the in the space, like, uh, or if you look at the history of Bitcoin, um, you have see, you're seeing so so often that the price goes very very high at one point and then it declines a little bit, um, and then it cools down for a while and then it goes up again. Mm -hmm. and so a bubble only uh, normally pops once, but if Bitcoin would be a bubble, it would have uh, bubble wrap uh, that uh, keeps popping. <laughs> yes, yes, it would have popped a few times. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I mean, in the end, it's really a, a steady upward tr uh, trend that has really some spikes and corrections, but uh, I think it's, there's no sign of any, I mean, if it might be, there might come a, a short-term correction that's, that would be natural, um, but uh, I would be very careful with the term bubble.